1 Peter chapter 5. Uh, now, if you're in my small group, don't worry, we're not going to stay there, but 1 Peter chapter 5 is where we're going to start uh, this evening. Last Wednesday, uh, Sam Blosser finished up our summer series in the Psalms, and we will begin a new study very soon. Uh, but I just wanted to hit the pause button tonight for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to share a bit of testimony uh, from my own life over the last few weeks. Uh, testimony with purpose, I pray. Uh, at the same time, uh, obviously over the last couple of days, I have not had the time to dig into my Bible study the way I would like to to prepare uh, for a Wednesday night. And so I really have used up my time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've had Pastor Troy and, and Sam and Joe and Steve and, and, and many of you have helped out in different ways here for Sundays and Wednesdays. And so uh, I wanted to go ahead and share with you. But we're not going to begin that study just yet. Uh, so tonight I wanted to share a little bit of testimony starting back maybe with our, our small group on Sunday evening where we were finishing up our study in 1 Peter 5, and really uh, just exactly what I needed for this week. And uh, I can't encourage you enough, if you're not involved in a small group, to give it a go. Right? If you haven't tried it out yet, uh, I, I know it's different than what we've done in the past, but what a joy it is to walk through life with brothers and sisters, growing together deeper in the Word. Uh, but uh, you know, I was able to sit with my brothers and sisters and, 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 and just looking at the Word and then say, as a result of what we read tonight, you know, what, what is God calling you to do this week? And so at the end of 1 Peter 5, there's the whole book right, is about suffering you know, for God's people. And uh, verse 10 in particular, in verse 11, says, After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now, that's a sermon in itself, right? Those two verses, and we're not going to dig into that tonight, but that little phrase there, the God of all grace, has meant so much to me in the last several days. Uh, because God has grace for every need, every trial, whatever it is you're facing right now in life, whether it's death or discouragement or depression or storms or trials that span the spectrum of what it is to live in this fallen world, God has grace for that. He is the God of all grace. All right, saving grace, sustaining grace, strengthening grace. Whatever it is you need, right? And I love that picture there. He will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And so I, I've been able to experience the grace of God and his strengthening hand, allowing me to stand on solid ground in a time in our life where it's been pretty shaky, right? It's been a bit of a roller coaster the last couple of weeks, and yet God's faithfulness has persevered. Now, that wasn't what I came away with for this week, but it certainly was what I needed. For this week, in particular, knowing what I was facing on Sunday night, gathered with my brothers and sisters in our living room, um, the first three verses really jumped out at me. And it says, So I exhort the elders among you, as a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And, and, and really, Peter writing to leaders in the church, right? Following Jesus Christ, the great shepherd, I want you to shepherd. And there's a, it's just loaded with, with commands for God's leaders, right? Elders within the church. But here he says, I want you to be an example to the flock. And knowing what I was going to face this week, that was what I told my small group. I said, this is what I want you to pray for me for this week. I want to, be, I want to lead well through this time for our church family. Uh, for for, for a decade, over a decade now, I have encouraged you, as you have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, encouraged you with God's promises. Uh, but I, I, I want to demonstrate that well, that God's promises are true in those times. 
I want to lead well. I don't want to I don't want to be someone who says, here's what God says, and then show something very different in my life when I'm walking through that trial. Uh, And so that was my prayer. And God prayerfully has has helped me in that, certainly with my family, but prayerfully here as a church family as well. And uh, that's what I want to do a little bit tonight is just walk through um, how we, according to Scripture, how we view death, how we handle death as God's people. Um, I'm not sure that was wise for me to undertake tonight, but I think that's the, the that's where the Lord has really burdened my heart. And so let's just pray and we're going to kind of walk through some thoughts together tonight. Not our typical Bible study, but I trust the Lord will use it in the hearts and lives of his people. Gracious Father, we thank you for your word tonight, how you truly speak. Lord, your word is life and health, all that we need for for life and for godliness. And Lord, you're able to accomplish your purpose tonight through your word, certainly in my own heart and life. And so I pray now that you might get me out of the way and that you might allow, uh, Lord, the testimony of your faithfulness to shine forth and the truth of your word to penetrate our hearts and strengthen us for days ahead as your people. For Lord, you are faithful and we too want to be faithful uh, in life and in death to bring honor and glory to your name because that's what it's all about. To you be honor and glory and praise, dominion now and forever and all time. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. And amen. So it was two weeks ago yesterday that my mom went into uh, the hospital for open heart surgery. And so it was... Uh, she downplayed a lot of what was going to happen, even to us as a family. We really didn't know the extent of what was happening. Um, but uh, she was having four-way bypass surgery, and by all accounts, the surgery went well. Right? And, but after the surgery, in recovery, her heart failed, right? and um, they don't know why. We will probably never know why, um, and you know, that's in the Lord's hands, obviously, but uh, that began a two-week span, right, where you guys have walked through this with me, so I don't have to go into great detail. Early on, we had some encouraging signs. This past weekend, I told you we were called in to, to meet with the doctors, and um, really before, we, before that meeting, my dad got a call in the middle of the night, Monday morning, Sunday night, that she may not make it before we could get there, and we did. We were able to get there and be with her. Um, but I mean, she she passed away quickly and quietly uh, into the presence of her Savior, and um, you know, <laughs> it, because of my my faith in Christ and the sure and certain promises of God's Word, I'm not asking the questions that some are asking, and, and I don't, I know we're video, and so I don't want to go into great detail tonight about where those questions may come from, but. You know, questions like, you know, if she hadn't had this surgery, well, then she'd still be here, right? I, I'm not playing the what-if game tonight. Um, and, and I say that because I've heard even God's people fall into that trap, right, when we're facing death. What if? What if? And, and here's what I know according to the, you say, well, aren't you surprised? Aren't you shocked? Absolutely, right? That's not what she expects. It's not what I expected. And even though I'm surprised... God is not. not you know, one, Psalm 139, verse 16 says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. <laughs> right? God has a book with our days in them. Right? So you know, in my understanding of God and his sovereignty in the word, my mom had a certain number of days, right? And, and, and do I understand how that all plays out? And how, no, I don't understand how that plays out in every scenario, but I know that this is true. And so I don't have to go, what if? Right? What if she didn't do this? What if we did do this? Right? Doesn't matter, right? God is sovereign. It's appointed to man once to die. Right? We, ha- we all have an appointment. My mom had an appointment, and I know so many of you have been praying along with me, praying for healing, praying for a miracle. Uh, it's been remarkable, right? In fact, there's been people all over the world praying for my mom, <laughs> which is, is just incredible to think about. Um, 
And I know some people, some of you perhaps, like to keep things private. Right? You don't really like to share when things are going on. I'm the other way. I'd rather make it as public as possible because I want to just set free an army of prayer warriors when things are happening. Right? So I've done that at different points. I, I've shared with you many times. I haven't really walked through a lot of suffering and uh, difficulties. You know, there was some time a few years ago where Amy was experiencing some uh, some severe nerve pain, and we didn't know it was dis- it was debilitating pain, uh, and we didn't know where it came from, and we didn't know how long it was going to last, and it was frightening, really. And we had kind of settled into like this could be our new normal, right? And but we just said, you know, we 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 told everybody <laughs> pray, you know, and and the Lord answered, and and she does not deal with that. We're praying she'll never deal with that again. But it was one of those moments that was probably one of the scariest times as a husband I've ever faced. Uh, maybe when, when uh, my daughter Emma was born, you know, when she was born, she came out, she wasn't breathing, you know, had a cord wrapped around her neck, and there for a few moments, it was just terrifying, right? But that was a quick moment, and then it was gone. Uh, but in any case, you know, people have been praying <laughs> all everywhere, and, and I know that there are probably some people who have been following my mom's story on social media and, and going, you know, Pastor, you you've been praying, God's people have been praying, God didn't hear, right? he didn't answer, right? he didn't heal, right, he didn't, you know, you, you asked for a miracle, and he didn't give the miracle, and I would say, he did, he did, not, not in the way that I prayed, not in the way I'd hoped, but on, on Monday, August 9th, God answered my prayer, and the prayers of all, uh, all those who were praying, he healed her, Right, in the most incredible, miraculous way that he could. He took her home to be with him. And <laughs> I believe with all my heart, God's promises, right? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And that, what the Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, is true. Right? <laughs> that for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. The death for those who are in Christ is gain. That is incredible. Right? Because that's not the way the world thinks about death. You know, yesterday morning, I, I went to physical therapy. First time in three weeks. I think they thought I got lost. But uh, as soon as I walked in, my, you know, one of the men asked me, he said, how's your mom? You know, he hadn't heard, didn't know. And, and I just, first thing that popped in my head was, Better than you and me, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know. And then, of course, I share with him that she, you know, she passed away. But, but that's the reality, right? She's not suffering. Right? She's enjoying the presence of her Savior in a way that we long for, right? Um, and, and so these truths. I remember a story about D. L. Moody. I don't know if you've heard this or not. Right? He when he was on his deathbed, he he commented. He said, "Pretty soon, you're going to read in the Chicago papers." that Dwight Moody is dead. (laughs) He said, don't you believe it. (laughs) I will be more alive than I am right now. And and, and that's what I believe to be true about my mom. You know, about a decade ago, she fell down steps and broke her neck and her back. And and many of you know, she would get up out of the pew on Sunday and she could barely walk. Um, It was hard for her to sit for long periods of time. She would be in great pain. No more, no more pain. No more suffering. And, and so as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we face death differently than the world around us. Now, it doesn't mean it's not real. doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. doesn't mean we don't grieve. And it's not to say that we can't get caught up in worldly thinking if we're not careful. Because right. we, we live in a day, an age in which we, we have really done everything we can to deny and delay death, right? We've, we've tried to push it off to the side. We don't like to think about it. We don't want to talk about it. You know, at one point in our world, death was really front and center. Right? I mean, it was, it was in your home. It was out front in the society, right? It, it, you know, people died at home. Children died. Mothers died giving childbirth. And with the rise of Modern health care and particularly, right, our, you know, the abundance of geriatric care that we have today, we've just kind of tucked death away behind the walls where we don't have to see it so much. And, and so 
it's become a bit uncomfortable for us to think and talk about death. And we need to. We need to, right? So we can think biblically and, 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 and respond to it in a Christian way. <laughs> I, I remember reading a story about King Louis the Fifteenth of France who basically told his advisors they could never use the word death in front of him. Right? He was so <laughs> ter- terrified of dying. Don't ever use the word. Of course, he died. Right? And so will we. Right? Every, uh, apart from the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, each and every one of us will die and so, you know, I think maybe that's one, one important thing this pandemic has done for us is kind of brought death back out front and center, right? Where we are more mindful and thinking. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I'm going to bounce around a little bit, so just bear with me. This is not going to be our typical walk through a passage together. But uh, as we think about death, you know, I, the first thing I would say is it's good for us to remember that death is, death is not natural. I know that it's, it's inevitable, but it's not natural. It's not, you know, when, when God created the heavens and the earth, it was good, right? Very good. And, and then in Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sin. Right? So you hear that, right? Sin entered into the world through one man, through Adam, right? So the entire, the entire human creation was, in, was, was affected, infected by sin. And through sin, death entered into the world. Right? God said, the day that you eat of the fruit of the tree, you shall surely die. Right? Now, and we talk about death often on Sundays, right? There's three connotations to death there. There's, spirit, or there's physical death that we are familiar with, right? Where... The soul and the spirit are separated from the body. Right? There's spiritual death, which is the condition of all men apart from Jesus Christ. Right? Ephesians 2, 1 says you're dead in trespasses and sin. Right? So spiritually, without Jesus, dead. Right? And then there is, in the scripture, an eternal death. And that's for all of those who are without Christ. They will be separated. And that's what death is, right? A separation. Right? Separated from spirit, soul, from body. Spiritually dead, separated from God. Eternal death is separation from God forever and ever and ever. Right? So, so death is not natural. And, and because it's not natural, we do fear it, right? There's a, there's a natural, uh, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, deliver all those who through Fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. It's through fear of death. Now, for us, as the people of God, we, we don't fear death the way that others do, right? We don't have to fear death. Now, if I think of Psalm 23, it says, Though I walk through the Valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Right? So you've heard me share over the years about the shadow of death. That death for God's people are, is merely a shadow. And, and I've shared this story so many times. You know, growing up uh, you know, um, in my bedroom, there was a tree outside of my window. And so the moonlight would shine through that tree and cast these hideous forms on the wall in my bedroom. Right. They were terrifying. I remember many times a little boy just pulling the covers over my head. Right. I mean, it was scary, but it was a shadow. What could that shadow do to me? Nothing. It couldn't hurt me. It couldn't touch me. And for God's people, death is merely a shadow. Can't hurt me, right? Can't touch me. So we see this picture here. First, First Corinthians fifteen twenty six is the last enemy. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Right. So there's a picture here in Scripture that death is feared and it is an enemy. Right. This is not the norm, not natural. Right. But we've got to deal with it. 
We have to deal with death. All of us do. We're going to face it. Every single one of us. And everybody has a view of how to deal with that. Everyone in all the world has a, has a view of, of what death means. Uh, I, you know, you and I, most of us hold to a, a theistic Christian worldview of death. Right? So that means I believe in that there's a God. There's one God who created heaven and earth and all. He's in control of all things. Right? And as a, in a Christian worldview, I believe that he sent his son into the world to die for our sins. Right? And if we would repent of our sin and believe in Jesus Christ, that we will be saved and we will not perish. Right? Our sins will be forgiven and we will have eternal life. Right? So that's a theistic Christian worldview in which, as I said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And even then, we are waiting for the day when Jesus Christ returns. And what? When he returns? We will be raised and we'll get a new glorified body to enjoy in a new heaven and a new earth. Right? So we have this incredible hope as the people of God. But people view and think about death differently in the world. There are those who just have a materialistic worldview who would say, there is no God. There is, there's nothing after death, right? You live, you die, and that's it. Now, for me, if that was my worldview, that's pretty hopeless, right? Because now, if, if I think that way, then I'm sitting here today feeling very differently. Right? That would lead me probably more to a nihilistic worldview, right? Everything's just pointless and meaningless, right? Or, right, other people kind of, they, 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 they approach it through a, uh, what would you call it, um, hedonistic, right? Basically, right, <laughs> eat, drink, and be merry, <laughs> for tomorrow you die, right? Do all you can for as long as you can, right? Enjoy this because it's going to be over. Right? And cur- certainly there are those even you who believe that there is something, there's something after death, but they don't know exactly what. Maybe everybody just kind of goes into this one Kind of, it's the circle of life, Lion King thing, right? <laughs> where, where everybody just kind of joins the force. Right? We don't believe that, right? No. Um, so, you know, there's, there's those who believe that you just go into endless, nearly endless cycles of reincarnation until you may perhaps attain, a, you know. So, so we want to look at what the Word of God says about not only life, but about death and rest securely in that right so death is not natural but it is in, inevitable barring the return of christ you know I, I i hate to burst your bubble but you're going to die right statistics are pretty pretty solid right 100 percent. everybody at some point part of his return will die and you can you can exercise and you can eat right and you can kick and you can scream right you can rage rage against the dying of the light as the poet says but it doesn't matter right (laughs) we're all going to die and it's important that we think about that right in fact (laughs) ecclesiastes chapter 7 i'm not telling you anything you don't know ecclesiastes 9 says the living know they shall die but in chapter 7 in verse 2 it actually says it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting For this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Now, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon, right? Wise, right? They called the preacher. It's a wise man giving solid life advice, and he says, better to go to a funeral than a party. Why? Why? Because that's the end of all mankind. It's good for us. Not good for us to tuck it away, hide it away behind the walls. So many times, families dealing with loss, they're going, what do I tell my kids? How do I tell your kids the truth? You say, well, it's not easy to deal with. No, it's not easy, but it's better than lying, right? This is real. It's reality. Be honest about life and death. And as God's people, we have this incredible hope that we can share 
And, and we'll get to that in just a moment. So, you know, why does he say it's better to go to a funeral than a party? Why? Because life is short, right? Life is a vapor. James 1.14 that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. <laughs> say, Pastor, you're really doing nothing to encourage me tonight. Right? This is not fun. Right? This is just truth, though, right? Even if you live to be 100 years old, that's just a drop in the bucket in the span of eternity. It's, it's, it's so little, so much, and to the ages and ages to come, right? When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. <laughs> Life is short. It's good for us to keep that in mind. <laughs> Jonathan Edwards actually, he's, he's I'm resolved to live my life with, with this in mind, right? That, 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 that I'm going to die, right? This could be my last day. That's a good way to live. Right? It's a good way to live, knowing, right? Because when you have that in your mind, you're going to do the things that matter most. Right? Life is short. Death is certain. Why? Because we sin, right? We're all sinners. The wages of sin is death. A wage is something you earn, something you deserve. We've all sinned. We deserve death, separation from God. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, for those who are in Christ, we have a hope. A hope of life, everlasting life, eternal life. So that, as I said before, I can stand before you tonight and I have this hope. I have a hope that my Mom, because of her faith in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, is in the presence of Jesus Christ right now. That changes the way I view things, doesn't it? If I don't have that hope, I feel very differently tonight. And I realize I'm speaking to some of you who have you, you lost maybe family who are not believers, and I know how, how heart-wrenching that can be. Because our hearts do break over that thought. But all the more reason why we, and, and hear me carefully tonight, you must give your loved ones that assurance. It's vital that you know that you know that you are saved. But please make sure your family knows that. Don't leave them any doubt. <laughs> it was really hard the other night, but I... I got my mom's Bible out and was able to go back and look at all of her notes. And, and uh, <laughs> just, it was tough. But at the same time, I get this sweet assurance as I see her walk with the Lord just kind of living on the pages of her Bible and her notes that she's making. And um, what a hope. First, First Thessalonians is probably a good... See, I, not only do I have a hope that I know where she's at, but I have a sure and certain hope that I will see her again. First Thessalonians chapter 4, I don't want to drag this out, verse 13 and 14 says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. And when the Bible uses that term asleep, it's talking about those who have died. Right? But the Bible uses a different term for Christians who have died than unbelievers who have died. Right? Unbelievers die. Right? It's death. But Christians sleep. Now, we're not talking about soul sleep, right? But he says, I, I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to be ignorant that you may not grieve. And that's not what it says, does it? Right? It says that you may not grieve as those who have no hope. We do grieve. I have grieved. I've wept. I'll continue to weep. I had a hard time tonight coming in and, and just talking to you all just because of your sweet <laughs> words beautiful <laughs> to share this life together as God's people but as you have you know said how much you're going to miss your mom my mom and reminding me of just little things about my mom that I'm going to miss yeah I'm thankful for the hope that I have in Christ this hope is rooted in what since we believe that Jesus died and rose again even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Right? See, because Jesus died and rose, my mom who died will rise. Right? And then listen to this in verse 16. 
the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. I'm really thankful for those plural terms there, right? (laughs) We will be caught up together with the Lord. The most glorious thing about heaven is Jesus. But it makes heaven sweeter to know that our loved ones who are in Christ will be there. So I have a hope tonight because of my faith in Christ that I will see my mom again and I'll see (laughs) Gary and Carol and man, I could just go down a long list tonight of faithful servants. What about you? Do you have that hope? Do you know without a doubt? Moses said this to the people of God in Deuteronomy 32 and verse 29. said, oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. It's a wise thing to think carefully about your life and where you will spend eternity. Have you thought about it? Have you considered where you will go when you die? Do you have hope in the face of death? If not, I would encourage you to settle that. Settle it now. Call upon the Lord while he is near. (laughs) He's done everything, everything necessary to make it possible for you to have life. But you must repent and believe. If, you, if you're concerned about that, please don't hesitate to reach out. I know there's people listening online. If you're listening and, and you're concerned about your salvation and your eternal life, reach out, email, call, text. If you're here tonight and that's a concern you have, because, see, listen carefully. If you have not put your faith in Christ, death is not just a shadow. It's not just a shadow. Death is is something to be feared because one day you will stand before Almighty God in judgment and He will say, depart from me. And that's what death is, separation from God forever and ever and ever. The Bible calls it the second death. Eternal death, cast into the lake of fire forever and ever. I don't say that to scare you. I just... I want to be open and honest about, with you about the reality of death. Physically, we're all going to face death apart from the return of Jesus. Spiritually, we are all dead in sin apart from Christ. And our only hope is the gospel of Jesus. And if you will believe and trust in him, you will be saved. But if you reject that gospel, you'll spend eternity separated from God. Thankful tonight for the hope that we have in Christ and the promises of his word that are true. His grace is sufficient. His peace does pass understanding. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you tonight for your help, for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for the way that you have kept your promises. And Lord, I thank you tonight more than anything for the hope that we have in Christ that goes far beyond this life. I thank you for the testimony of my mom that she knows you, that you know her. Lord, I pray if there's even one in this place or who's listening to this message that that is without Christ, may you work in their heart to open their eyes and see their need that they too might be saved and have this glorious hope. And we leave it all in your hands. We ask it in Jesus' name and amen. God bless. Have a good night.